It's been about a week since Apple announced that they're going to be releasing the satellite text messages for the iPhone 14, 15, and the ones that will be coming up in the future. And I think this is really exciting because this is going to change the market for satellite communication devices such as Garmin Reach and all the other brands. Today I'm going to tell you about some of the reasons why I think this might be really big and game changing while your inReach might be an obsolete object. I'm going to talk about some of the things that Apple is doing with satellite communication abilities and what you can expect out of it now moving forward. So as of right now, you can get SOS features with an iPhone 14 or 15 contact SOS over satellite and you also can get roadside assistance and drop your location to your friends and family over the Find My app. Moving forward in a few months once iOS 18 is released to the public you'll be able to text people if they have iMessage or or SMS. Now to be able to receive a message over satellite with the new update the person either is gonna have to have iOS 18 or have it sent to them via SMS. To receive a text message yourself from someone it has to be someone that's one of your family members and your iCloud account or someone who's your emergency contact. For everyone else you have to initiate the conversation yourself for them to be able to text you back and forth. So it's something to be mindful of. If you're expecting a text message, you might have to start that conversation in advance. This one has a Samsung phone. It's the same situation. You just have to initiate the text messages first just so they're able to message you back. Besides that, for regular iMessage, it's gonna be normal as usual. You won't be able to send pictures or use stickers, but you'll still have those tap backs and you'll send emojis over text message. So that's how the texting is gonna work. It's fairly straightforward, honestly. For people who have access to the beta and some of the things that they've had happen while I've noticed, if you're in that gray zone where you're connected to a cell tower, but you're not able to actually send messages and nothing's going back and forth. You're not able to activate the satellite feature, which could be a little bit difficult because sometimes those gray areas can stretch on for kilometers at a time. I wish that Apple would have come up with a way where you're able to override it. Maybe they'll come out in the full version where you're able to access satellite and you're able to drop off from the cellular towers for those situations. So let's go with the pros and cons list of why you might want to ditch your Garmin and switch over to an Apple device for your full-time satellite communication device. First off, initially, there's no cost to it, which I don't think that's going to last long term. Having knowing Apple and how they are as a product, they want to make their money somehow. And they've invested $450 million into this. They have to get their money back somehow. Right now, Apple is using the Global Star Network for all their satellites, a familiar company that does does use Global Star is Spot, which gives us some probably a rough guess on where how much is going to cost. Right now, I believe Spot current plans are around $12 US a month with a $30 activation fee. And to get the equivalent plan with Garmin to have unloaded text messages, it's $65 a month. Pretty crazy that Apple's offering this where if you get the equivalent plan with Garmin, that's costing you upwards of $800 a year. Like I've said, I'm expecting it to cost money in the future. If you didn't quite catch that, you're gonna have unlimited messages. So you don't have to worry about hitting a certain quota with your text messages while you're out there in the wilderness. Now the perk of having unloaded text messages, you can use stuff such as Bolt WX. You can spam all your weather updates and get a very accurate read reading on what the weather is supposed to be. It's a lot more accurate than the Garmin inReach's weather feature. One thing I hear a lot of people talk about too, that's another pro, is that with an Apple Watch or your phone, it has fault detection. So if you were to fall and knock yourself out unconscious, it'll automatically connect to the satellite and send an SOS. So say if you're totally out of it, you've hit your head, it'll contact SOS for you, where with an inReach, you were to fall, you have to hit the button manually yourself to be able to hit SOS. That's something that's pretty big and people should think about if you're really concerned about injuries while you're out in the back country. And you're able to send unlimited Find My updates to your friends and family via the Find My app. That's a really good feature that I have. You have to do it manually though. Unlike with Garmin, where you're able to set a tracker and you're able to, able to hit check-in points every 10 minutes or so. It has most of the features already as a Garmin in reach. Let's talk about some of the negatives now. So like I said, you're gonna have certain areas like it doesn't have active tracking. So while you're in the backcountry, you wanna send to your friends and family of your progress along the trail or wherever you're going. They'll be able to watch you with a breadcrumb trail as it goes along and they'll be able to see that if you use a Garmin. Like I said, you're gonna have to update that manually with your iPhone, sending the Find My updates, say you have a set time, like four o'clock in the afternoon, I'll send you an update of where I am. And they'll be able to check it later in the future on their Find My app to see where you are. It's something you'd have to do differently and you also do it manually. And well, from just looking at the devices, take a guess on which one you think is be more rugged in a fall. I'm gonna put my mind on this thing. But something surprising when I was doing my research between the uh, Garmin inReach Mini, not this one, because uh, this one's a little bit outdated, is that iPhones actually have a higher IP water rating than Garmin. iPhones are rated up to IP8, where Garmin's are rated up to IP7. An iPhone can be submerged at deeper depths for longer periods of time, essentially is what that means. Now, take that with a grain of salt, what that actually means in the real world, but for the most part, both of them are water resistance. 
straight out of the box. If you were to drop an iPhone and crack it or have dents in the case, that could make it more susceptible to water damage. Obviously, an iPhone's not gonna be as strong. You can just see how dinky these little things are compared to this. Another thing too is battery life. When you're using a satellite communication device with your iPhone, it's expected to use as much battery as you would as streaming a video. So it's not a crazy amount of battery uses you get while doing it. But that being said, having a standalone device that is able to, that you'll be able to rely on its own separate battery system, you don't have to worry about it dying. And there's not much going on with these things. They have a decent battery life, I'd say. I personally know if I'm using active track with my inReach, I find the battery lasts about two days or so before I have to recharge it. Like I said earlier, this is also an older model. So inReach Mini 2 or their inReach Messenger, the battery could be a lot better on those ones. Another negative is that iPhones are on the Global Star network, which right now it needs to be updated more. That's a lot of the issues that people have with using spot devices that sometimes it can be unreliable compared to the Garmin where they use the Iridium satellite network which has global coverage whereas with the iPhones only certain countries now I imagine that'll change over time but it's something to be mindful of if you're traveling international and you want to have access to SOS in the future if you're only bringing an iPhone along with you so essentially from the pros and cons list the biggest conclusion for like the ability that the iPhone's not gonna be able to do in the future is active trap you're gonna be able to do everything that you can do on an in reach with an iPhone once they release this update which I think is really cool. So that wraps up the pros and cons list. Now let's talk about some of my thoughts about this and some of my experience of using a Garmin inReach and what I've seen from other people talk about online with their thoughts and concerns. But one of my big concerns, honestly, is from my personal experience with an inReach is that it's not perfect. I've had it lose connection for me some reason. I had to resync it to be able to contact people over text messages. So it lost that build and it wouldn't come back. Everything I tried to do from the device, I had to plug into my computer and resync it. It's something that can happen with inReach, which is slightly concerning. One thing I've seen online too, is a lot of people stress about the battery life of an iPhone. I don't really think that's much of an issue because I haven't found the battery life on the inReach to be overwhelmingly good or overwhelmingly better than an iPhone, especially while using active track. So for that reason, I typically leave my active track off while I'm outside. Now, it's nice having a separate device for an SOS feature, but I don't know if it's really necessary, in my opinion. Unless you're somewhere going out, like say remote Alaska or whatnot, you probably don't need a standalone SOS device. I think for most people, if you're going like a populated trail or if you're actually running to other hikers, I think your iPhone's gonna be more than sufficient. It does become quite risky when you have everything wrapped up into one device, such as like, your navigation, your cellular communication, SOS. So if you're to take a phone and break your iPhone, that's gonna be a bad day. So it is nice having the second device, but like I said, how many people actually bring paper maps nowadays versus just to keep their navigation on their phone? And they'd be totally hoopless if their phone broke and then having navigation. In my experience, I haven't broken an iPhone since I believe 5s which was nearly 10 years ago since i've had that phone they've built iphones to be a lot more robust nowadays compared to they were back then it's also part of the reason why they're not able to fix them because they built them so that they don't need to be fixed take with that information as you will you it's a different discussion for a different time. I know different cellular companies as well are trying to get their own satellite communications thing going on, such as T-Mobile with Starlink and Rogers here in Canada. They're trying to get it so you just use your cellular network so you're able to connect to satellites up in the sky, which would be very interesting and potentially make a competitive market for Apple, if especially if they start charging for their satellite communication. That also could enable all the other things you would do with cellular devices. So those are my thoughts. Now, let's hear your guys' thoughts down in the comment section down below. Safety has been something on my mind. I have a through hike planned in the future. If you'd like to see some stuff on that through hike and stuff I have leading up to that, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.